Hi guys, welcome to Book Time. My name's Julia. Today I'm going to be doing the Goodreads tag video, which is a bunch of questions about Goodreads and the stuff you've listed on there. I was tagged by the lovely Kirsten at Kirsten's Bookmark, so I'll tag her channel down below. I'm pretty sure the original tag was by Spiral Bookmark. I'll link it down below as well. If I'm wrong, I'll put the, the correct original one down there as well. So I'm just going to get straight into the questions. The first one was, what was the last book you marked as read on Goodreads? I would have to say it was Flames by Robbie Arnett. I just finished this this morning. Well, on the day that I'm filming this, which is Saturday, this will probably be uploaded later. I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. And I will link um, the video in which I talked about this book below because it's brilliant and you should all read it. The next question is, what are you currently reading? I've currently got three books on my currently reading list as of time of filming. Um, they are The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman. So that one is an audio book that I'm listening to in the car, obviously the second in the, his Dark Materials trilogy. I'm loving it so far. The first half I wasn't loving as much, not because the story wasn't interesting, but just because there were so many different threads. And I was like, how is this all gonna pull together? Like it just seems like one new storyline keeps starting after another. But now that I'm in the second half, it's all starting to pull together and I'm really, really enjoying it and quite impressed actually with the way that Philip Pullman's managing to pull all the threads together and how those threads kind of relate to stuff that was going on in the first book. So hopefully it continues to be um, as engaging as it is. The next one I've got on my list is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I mean, what do I need to say? It's awesome. It's a five star read, obviously. Um, it's a reread, obviously. And I'm rereading it partly because I love it, but also because I have a Harry Potter trivia night coming up next month and I'm trying to read as many of the books before then as I can just to refresh and also to have fun because I love them. The last book on my currently reading list is uh, kind of like a middle grade graphic novel or graphic, and it's not really a picture book, it's more of a graphic novel called Home Time by an Aussie writer called Campbell White and I'm really, really liking it. Um, it's about some kids, a group of five kids, I think, who finish um, primary school. It's the last day and they're all walking home together and they're like getting fish and chips and they, on the way home, they all fall into this river and basically wake up in this alternative kind of fantasy forest world called the Forest of the Peaches and the peaches are like these cute little crazy forest they're not actually spirits they're just creatures who live in the forest they've got a bit of an Ewok vibe but they're not fluffy um, and the peaches think that the kids are the forest spirits anyway it's really it's really fun and crazy and the artwork is beautiful it has several different styles of artwork that are all I think people my age would love it because it's quite um, nostalgic it, it reminds me a bit of stranger things not in terms of the, the plot line but in the sense of nostalgia that it's creating like one set of the artwork is all pixelated like an old school computer game um like i said some of it reminds me a bit of the ewoks um anyway it's it's really great so i think people my age would love it but i definitely think that kids would love it like my brother and i would have loved it when we were kids because the artwork is just so beautiful and there's so many cool things to find. Anyway, I'm going to do a proper review video on it later. So I won't talk about it too much, but that's my other currently reading and it's really good so far. The next question is, what was the most recent book you listed as TBR or on Goodreads on the want to read list? Mine was The Fish Girl by Mirandi Rewo, who is an Australian writer, I think. She is a Brisbane based writer as far as I understand. And this, um, it's, I think it's like a novella won the Viva La Novella Prize run by Seizure Online, which is a prize run each year um, by a kind of literary group called Seizure, who publish in print form and physical form the winning novellas, which is really cool because I feel like novellas, particularly in Australia, because our publishing scene is so small and novellas obviously don't sell as well as full length novels. Um, so it's really cool that they're sort of working towards promoting novellas. So the blurb just says, um, the fish girl tells of an Indonesian girl whose life is changed irrevocably when she moves from a small fishing village to work in the house of a Dutch merchant. There she finds both hardship and tenderness as her traditional past and colonial present collide. Sounds pretty great. It's got really good reviews. I'm really excited to read it. The next question is what book do you plan to read next? Oh, this is a hard one because I just finished a book this morning and it always takes me a little while to like recalibrate my emotions after reading a book, especially a really great one and choose what I'm going to read next. I think I want to read, and normally when I choose a next book, I like to read something 
quite different from the one before because otherwise I mix them up in my mind and I hate that. The next one I'm going to read that might not be the next actual book I read but it's the next one that's listed on Goodreads because this is a Goodreads tag is one called To Become a Whale by Ben Hobson who is an Aussie writer. He's from Brisbane as well I think and he has a lovely channel. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head but it's really great. I'll link it down below. His channel is less of a booktube channel and it's more about writing and the process of writing and what he finds hard, what he finds helpful and sort of his own experience. I really like it. He seems like a really nice guy. Um, and yeah, his, I think this is his debut novel. And I think it, from what I understand, it's set in the 60s, I think. And it's about a boy whose mum has died and his dad takes him to work on a whaling station. But the, the man, like the dad, is sort of a very um, traditional sort of masculine type. And the boy is quite a sensitive boy. And so I think it's going to be sort of about negotiating, this boy negotiating his masculinity, which is quite sensitive in kind of a tough so-called man's world. That's the impression I get anyway. It sounds really great. I actually read the first few pages the other day and the writing style was really beautiful. So I look forward to getting into that one. The next question is, do you use the star rating system? I do, but I kind of don't love it because I feel like it's not very adequate to be able to just give a book five stars because oftentimes I will love a book but and it will feel like a five star book to me but I know that technically speaking it's probably not worth five stars like there are some flaws in the structure or the writing style or whatever but just to me it was a five star book but then other ones I'm like oh well, technically this is kind of perfect but I just didn't have an emotional connection with it does that mean I give it five stars you know I just find it kind of hard and you end up compromising something with the rating system but I do use it the only time I don't really use it if it's a DNF um, because I, I don't know I feel like it's unfair if I don't like a, a book enough to finish it I feel extra mean giving it like one star so yeah the next question is do you have a reading challenge I do I think it was like 40 books I don't even really know what it is um, I find most years I read between 40 and 50 books Last year I didn't because, or the year before, because I was pregnant and I had a really rough pregnancy so I didn't really get much reading done because I couldn't focus. And then last year my baby was like between zero and one so I also didn't get much reading done because I had had zero sleep for a really long time. Now I feel like it's really, like I'm able to pick up the pace with my reading again and it's really fun so yeah, I have no idea. Um, even what my challenge was or what I'll get to by the end of the year but I, I, it would be great to get above 50 books I guess that would be kind of great but we'll see what happens because um, it's only a few months left of the year. Do you have a wish list? I don't know what a wish list is on Goodreads so if anyone can tell me please leave it down below. If it's a list of books that I want to buy then obviously yes but it's about a thousand books long so <laughs> I haven't got them listed all online because it would be too many. What book do you plan to buy next? Uh, I Hopefully not too many. I'm really trying to cut back on the... I mean, I don't actually buy that many books, but, um, you know, just trying to save money. So trying to use the library more and more or, like, borrow from friends. But um, two books that I definitely will buy this year. One I will probably buy next week or whenever the publication date is, is Lethal White by Robert Galbraith, a.k.a. J.K. Rowling. It's the latest Cormoran Strike book and I really adore that series and every time a new one comes out I buy it on my Kindle. I don't love reading on my Kindle but for some reason I always read those ones on my Kindle so I'm pretty pumped about that. The other one is from my very favourite middle grade series um, which is the Stella Montgomery Intrigues by Judith Russell. She's an Aussie writer but the series is set in Victorian England and it kind of follows the life of um, Stella Montgomery who is an orphan um, sounds like every other Victorian middle grade series out there but I feel like this one is so rich and the writing is so good and you can tell that Judith Russell has really researched and knows a lot about the time period so it's very specific and detailed but not too deep like it's not overburdened with detail it's just beautiful and I love the characters and in each book Stella has there's like some magical mystery to be solved but the arc over the three books is her finding out sort of about her family history and so the one that's about to come out called Wakeston Hall I think is going to be the final in the series and I'm really sad about it and I think I'm going to start writing to Judith Russell and begging her to keep going because I love them so much. I reread them. Well, the first two I've reread each of them every year since 
they respectively came out. I've already reread them this year, so I'm really pumped for the next one to come out. Next question is, do you have any favourite quotes? I have a lot of favourite quotes from books, but I don't have any of them listed on Goodreads. Who are your favourite authors? Um, I don't know if I have any favourite authors listed on Goodreads. I feel like I'm a terrible person to do this tag. For most questions, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how Goodreads works. But in any case, my favourite authors of all time are Cormac McCarthy, Joan Didion, Margot Lanigan, Rebecca Solnit, who's a non an American non-fiction writer who is brilliant. Um... Yeah, that's all I can think of right now. Yeah, they're the only ones I can think of right now. Again, I don't think they're listed on Goodreads, Soz. Have you joined any groups? Yes, I have. It's the one group I'm a part of and I basically never participate or I haven't at least since I joined it very a long time ago. It is the Australian Women Writers Challenge group. So the Australian Women Writers Challenge was started up a few years ago. I'll link it down below. It's a pretty cool idea. It basically um, started because um, it basically started because lots of data was coming out that in countries around the world, books written by men were more frequently reviewed. It was also coming out that most reviewers were men um, and a few other things. Anyway, basically this came out and it was like each year you set a challenge of a certain amount of books to read and review. So books written by Australian women and you would also review them online and then you would share your review through the platforms created by the Australian Women Writers Challenge. It was a really cool idea and it's a really friendly community and people comment on each other's reviews and stuff and it was just a way of really boosting the review community around women's fiction in Australia. Um, but alas, I haven't participated in that group. Uh, well, not on Goodreads for a long time anyway. I did participate for the web in the website for many years. I think that's all the questions. It's all the ones I can find anyway. Obviously, if anyone wants to do the tag, they should just do it because you're all free people. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.